Leadership Training. Father, I pray in Jesus' name for your anointing to be upon your word. I thank you for your goodness, Lord, your grace, and your mercy. I ask you for your spirit, your wisdom uh, to just cover us, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I do want to say this real quick, that uh, we had a, a, another great work day at the church. Uh, we want to uh, thank, be thankful for all those that were able to help or sending help, <laughs> because we had a large group. We uh, got a great deal done again today, and um, we're steady working at it to get prepared for our company coming. But more than that, it's just the house of God. We want to take care of it. Hello, Kim. Um, it's it's just uh, it's good to see the uh, the body working together, but also the church coming together. And some long needed maintenance is being taken care of. So I am so appreciative. But um, this is lesson number thirteen uh, on the leadership training, and. It is centered around one area. The title would be problem solving. Uh, and this is almost a no-brainer, but it's a very good uh, uh, teaching. You're not going to be a leader of any level without having to solve problems. This is just the truth. And so I'm just going to read a little bit to you and share some personal uh, uh, thoughts on it. It says, in this world you will have trouble. Jesus said, But take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. As we go through life here on earth, trouble is a given. Amen. And, and I'm going to say that we've had more, more issues pop up in the last few years, it seems like, than ever. Um, problems are unavoidable, but they don't have to be insurmountable. Problems, I'm looking at little things popping up on my phone. Problems become a problem only when we let them. Now that's a strange statement. Problems become a problem only when we let them. It's all a matter of perspective. The author Robert Kiyosaki said, Instead, inside every problem, lies an opportunity inside every problem lies an opportunity i'm gonna tell you i hate problems i just as soon cruise through without any issues but inside every problem uh there there is an opportunity we just have to be able to to find that opportunity problems are everywhere and they can be have a negative effect on followers as well as on leaders Leaders have a responsibility to help their people solve problems as quickly and effectively as possible. So how do you take heart in the face of problems? The first step is to admit that problems will come. Of course, we, if you're old enough in any form of leadership, you already know that, that one. Many people expect or at least hope for smooth sailing. Once the leader has accepted that rough water is inevitable, they're able to anticipate and prepare for it, not in a negative, but in a realistic way. Leaders can handle anything that comes when they expect the best but plan for the worst. I've heard that for many years. Expect the best but plan for the worst. And I think what it comes down to is just being cautious and, and just in case type things. Problems are simply obstacles in the path towards a goal. It's easy to let them block the view of the finish line. Effective leaders look past the problems and keep their mind on the goals and the big picture. This combats hopelessness and powerlessness. It also can reveal the way past the obstacle, especially when people search for solutions uh, creatively and think outside the box. Now, we're talking about business, but I want to say this. Uh, just going off of what I just read to you. In the church world, we have certain words that God's given to us. Um, promises. 
and, and I'm going to say something. This may be off the path a little bit, but just hang with me. It is an absolute truth. Um, excuse me. Everybody wants to run to somebody to get a word from God. I mean, and I really do uh, like prophetic words, uh, words of knowledge. And uh, especially when, when God really speaks through someone and gives you a word of knowledge or a prophetic word. But let me just, just uh, try to, I'll give a little uh, insight to those prophetic words. Most times, if God gives us a word, well, let me, let me back up and say this. Why would God have to give us a word if we're walking in his will? Why would we need a word from God if we're just doing what we're called to do? And I've come to one conclusion is that when God gives us a word, that word is given by God to encourage us to continue on the journey. And when the word is given, often we're in a smooth sailing mode not realizing around the corner it might get a little difficult and he's saying i gave you a word to hold on to so as we journey this life and sister tam and i were talking about some of the battles that we've gone through and you you, you might can see it but um i'll just turn this thing it says i know it's written backwards probably on yours but it says just trust me for today and you've heard me say that we've been grabbing a hold of that every day and we were talking about how the lord gave that to us uh, just before we sold our house. And she said, is it possible he gave that to us just to hold on to because he knew we'd go through some bumps in the road? And I have to say, absolutely. Um, he gives us a word to keep us going. So be encouraged if God gives you a word and it's a smooth time, write that word down because when the bumps come, pull that word out and say, but God said, the world says this, circumstances say this, but God said. And that's what we hold on to is what God said to us. So just want to encourage you with that, uh, that word of uh, advice, I guess I can say. Every problem introduces you to yourself. It reveals how you think and what you're made of. Do you stop or turn back when confronted with an obstacle or find a way over, under, or around it? Getting past problems is a crucial part of achieving your goals. Every time you choose to see beyond a problem and think creatively until you find its solution, you not only get closer to your objective, you also increase your skill as a problem solver. One of the things that I've had to do in business, uh, especially when you're in the... Uh, field working i'll say it that way church and you know that's that's one situation uh but in the construction field there are multiple obstacles daily hello heidi there are multiple obstacles daily in the construction field and my men that worked with me they would see me often just standing and staring and they got they got to the place of realizing I'm just thinking and I'm thinking ahead. I'm looking at things and saying, okay, is there going to be a problem here or is there going to be a problem there? And I literally would, would avoid many uh, potential issues of delay because I slowed down to think about it. Because what I found out is every obstacle can be overcome. And uh, I'll give you a scripture that says, uh, we can do, can you, can you write down can do for me? We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. There's not an obstacle, a circumstance that we can't get through to the other side. Matter of fact, the Bible also says, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, who are called according to to his purpose so we've got a more for us than against us so if there's an obstacle and i want to address some obstacles in just a minute but if there's an obstacle we can get past that obstacle 
to the goal that God has us going or that we even have ourselves going to because God is for you and if God is for you who can stand against you so obstacles will come I spoke last week I think it was last week about you know we're we're uh, uh, having services doing our thing and then someone burns our church down and not only did they burn it down they burned it down right in a, a three-month period where there was no insurance and then the replacement building that we got collapsed in the driveway. And good to have you, Robert. Yes, you can. Um, <laughs> can do. Uh, it, it burned down and then the, the building collapsed in the middle of the driveway. Those were major obstacles, I'm just going to tell you. And then some of our obstacles are up here. <laughs> you might want to do that. Um, they're, they're mental, they're spiritual, they attack our minds. These are obstacles to cause you not to continue on the path God has you on or not to reach the goal if you're in the business world or whatever. Um, but there's always, if you'll slow down and trust God, there's always a way to the other side. Um, I don't know what your best problem solving time is. Let me tell you what my best solving problem time is. And Sister Tammy, I believe, is the same exact way. When we go to sleep, often in the middle of the night, the Holy Spirit will speak to me and show me the complete solution to an issue. I mean, he'll just like, I wake up in the middle of the night and I know the whole answer. Has anybody on here ever had that happen? Because it happens to me fairly often, even if it's a, a personal issue, a financial issue, a construction issue, a uh, whatever problem may be, often in the middle of the night, the Holy Spirit speaks to me and wakes me up and literally he has spoken the whole answer to me. And I have got up the next day and said, here's how to do that. And it was exactly, thank God we're not alone on these things. Some people may say that, you know, hey, Pastor Dave, you're, you're a strong man. I am not. I serve a strong God. That's the reality. Uh, so slow down and know that there is a way around every obstacle. And God is for you. So I hope that makes sense to somebody. So I want to just cover just a couple of areas. Um, problems come or obstacles come in many shapes and sizes. I wrote this down, and this is just in the natural uh, element of things, circumstances. From air conditionings, hello Ruth Powers, <laughs> sometimes we're our own worst enemy, yeah, you're speaking a mouthful there. What do you do when the air conditioner quits in the middle of summer? Or in the uh, the you you're having a, an event and you run out of toilet paper. I mean, or a PA system quits. I'm talking about church things. Hello, Brandy. Good to have you. These are real things that happen. Do you know? Several years ago, uh, before we had remodeled the bathroom area of our church. Every Toys for Tots event we had, the toilets backed up. Every single one. They'd come and get us and say, the toilets are backed up again. You know, that was a major obstacle. But what you do is, someone pulls their sleeves up and gets a mop and goes and works at it. And we, uh, we just keep pushing forward. You, you just can't let the obstacles stop you. There's always a solution. Um... These type of like air conditioning, PA systems, uh, weird things happening, they're, they're uncontrolled things. But you can still, you just got to stop and say, what's the best solution right now for this situation? You know, there's been a few times over the years that we had to have moved the church services straight outside. You know, during the COVID time, we, you know, they wouldn't let us in the building it's, and, uh, so we went and had service out in the in the field a couple of times, like a drive-in service. It was kind of fun. But there's always a solution. And so as a leader, your job is not to panic, not to flip out. It's to stop 
pray, listen, and weigh out the best solution. Um, then, then we have problems that, that are people problems. Um, from sometimes from a leader. Sometimes I cause a problem. Other leaders cause a problem. Or from church family. Um, sometimes there's somebody accusing something and that creates a problem. Um, I read earlier that we need to be quick to uh, uh, fix the issue. You know, be, be um, I'm trying to go back and read it. It says, uh, leaders have a responsibility to help their people solve problems as quickly and effectively as possible. I agree 100%. But sometimes the problems are a little deeper than just trying to fix something uh, rapidly. And so I wrote down just a thought on dealing with, with problems. And I'm not talking about a flat tire. A flat tire is a problem. If you have a flat tire, just get out and fix the flat tire. If you can't fix the flat tire, then call somebody and they'll help you fix the flat tire. Those, those are things you can fix quickly. But if you have a people issue, a family issue, uh, you know, um, a friend issue, a neighbor issue, uh, an accusation issue, um, someone says something about somebody else, someone's feelings are hurt, all these are real things that happen. The first piece of advice I can give you, and I hope you grab a hold of this, is be patient. Don't just jump into something and try to fix it. Contrary to the first part of this, the first part of this is just in the realm of air conditioning breaks or some crazy thing happens or you, you're, you, someone don't show up. These are all fixable right then. But when you're dealing with the emotions of people, and I think that is a real big thing for leaders, that we all deal with the emotions of people. And uh, we have to be patient so that's the first thing I'll say. Be patient. Pray and wait and listen to God. Listen to the Spirit of God that's guiding you. Then secondly, um, get all the facts. It's so easy to get some information and try to solve a problem with partial information. And if you do that, you're going to blow it. It's, it's not going to work out the way you'd like it to. So... Gather all the facts, and then pray. And then the last thing I'll say, so three things on dealing with people. And these are just something I wrote down. I could probably give you a whole book of things to do when dealing with, with people issues. But number one, be patient. Um, uh, get the facts. Number three, don't assume what others are thinking. Don't assume what others are thinking. You will mess up. And number four, view it from all sides. Don't be have any partiality. Just view it from all sides. And then pray. Let me read it again. Be patient. Get all the facts. Don't assume what others are thinking. And view it from all sides. This will save you a world of mistakes and a world of hurt. Sometimes you got to walk through some things, but you got to know the details. I've known plenty of times over the years that people got mad at other people. And, or they'd come and share something with me, but they only had half the story. You guys know I'm preaching to the choir now. Get the whole story. Don't just shoot off and try to to fix something with a partial understanding it'll it'll wreck your world and the biggest thing is don't assume what other people are thinking um, every time I've done that I can uh, sorrowfully tell you I have failed miserably trying to think what somebody else is thinking I'm assuming what they're thinking um, so I'm gonna read it one last time. I hope this makes sense to you. If what I'm saying to you resonates, give me some stars or something, or flags or hearts or something. Be patient. Get good facts. Don't assume what others are thinking, 
and view it from all sides. Very, very important to make a good decision and then pray about it, of course. Be patient. Pray in that patience and ask God to tell you, do I step in? Do I not? Do I wait? What do I do? And let the Holy Spirit lead you as a leader to resolve problems that involve people. If it's a problem that involves a battery that goes out, buy a battery. <laughs> it's pretty simple. But people problems are a whole different world because people have emotions. We all do. And the, the more I'm, I'm uh, in ministry and leadership and the older I'm getting, I'm realizing I don't think any of us don't have problems. <laughs> and sometimes those problems just kind of come out around us. Um, I, can I confess something to you? I, I don't know if this is true or not, but I want to confess it to you. So, there's a young lady in Phyllis Building Supply. I speak to her quite often. I go in there. Um, and she's usually very nice. So today I go in there and I have to pick up some uh, items for the church work day. And uh, they sent me a uh, gave me a phone call and asked me to pick some other items up so I asked her about the items well she wasn't sure and so we're standing over there and so I call the person that sent me and said what do you want and you know what this and that and they gave me the answers and so I I I got the information I got the item and I went and checked out well then a little while later I came back into the store they sent me back for some wood and I, I spoke to her on my way up, and I just, by passing, I said, I need one two-by-six treated eight-foot. Thank you. And I went up to the front. I never even slowed down, went and got it. But she never even responded to me. And so, as the Christian man that I am, I said, well, maybe I need to go pray for her. Uh, maybe she's having a bad day. So I pay for my wood and I go to the back and nobody's around. It's just her and me. And I said, are you okay? Because you seem sad today. And she, she says, I'm okay today. This, I don't have any problem. And she said it in a way that made me think she thought I had a problem and an attitude when I came in the first time. And I said, well, I don't like it when you're sad. And I smiled at her real big and walked out. And next time I came in, she was all friendly and stuff. But I think maybe I responded buying the first item. Hi, Debbie. I responded buying the first item in a way that she took it that I was not happy. Or I was angry. Or I was mad at her. You see, we're dealing with emotions. And maybe it was me. Maybe it wasn't. But either way, a signal was sent. And we had to clear that air because it's just that simple. You're dealing with the human race and, and emotions. So don't just assume you might be the problem or they might be a problem. Let's just try to fix it and work together. Amen. I hope that makes sense to somebody. Okay. Sorry I'm rambling on. Um, I, I want to share, a uh, the, as we do each week, a uh, storyline of the Bible. And... Uh, Oh, oh, World Outreach said, maybe it was me. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I would almost bet that that came from my wife uh, in the other building. Thank you, Sister Tammy. Um, <laughs> maybe it was me. Well, hey, let's just talk about that for a minute. Let's have some fun. We get angry uh, sometimes or bothered by other people because they get bothered at us. And they'll think that you have a problem and you think they've got a problem. Well, let me tell you something. If your blood pressure's up, or in many cases, if your sugar levels are a little wacky, if your hormones are a little wacky, uh, any chemical imbalances inside your body, listen to me close, I don't, I'm not trying to be Dr. Dave, <laughs> But those chemical balance inside your body, if they get out of whack, you can, you can show an attitude without feeling an attitude. You can show that you're angry 
and you're not really angry, but it's coming from you. So don't be so quick to point the finger at somebody else when it might be something that's going on inside your own body that you don't even know about. I remember years ago, I, I had shingles, uh, that shingles rash, and they gave me a medication. It totally changed my personality. I was being mean all the time, and you know I had no idea. I thought I was being sweet as pie, and they said, why are you so mean? I said, what are you talking about being mean? I'm not being mean. <laughs> but maybe I was. And I asked several of the family members, they all said, yeah, you're being mean. So we looked up the side effects on that medicine and said, you know, can get angry or whatever. So we went to different medicine, got rid of it. Don't be so quick to point your finger and say someone else has got the problem when it can be you. Look in the mirror first. Just saying. Just a simple piece of advice. Thank you, Sister Tammy, for reminding me that sometimes I have problems. <laughs> Here you go. You ready? Second Kings chapter 4, verse 8. One day Elisha went to Shunan, and a well-to-do woman was there who urged him to stay for some food. So whenever he came by, he stopped at their house to eat. She said to her husband, I know that this man who often comes to our house is a holy man of God. Can we make him a small room on the roof and let's give him a bed, some place to rest, a table, some place to eat and study, a chair, some place to relax, and a lamp that he can see. Then he, came, then he can stay there whenever he comes to see us. One day when Elisha came, he went up to his room, and he laid down there. And he said to his servant Gehazi, Call for the Shunammite woman. So he called her, and she stood before him. Elisha said, Tell her, You have gone to all this trouble for us. Now what can we do for you? Can we speak on your behalf to the king or the commander of an army? Is there anything that you want? And she replied, I have a home among my own people. So, what can be done for her? Elijah said. In other words, she says, I, I have a home right here. What, you know, and Elijah said, What can be done? And Elijah asked Gehazi. And Gehazi said, She doesn't have a child. She has no son. And her husband is old. Then Elisha called her. So he called her, and she stood in the doorway. About this time next year, Elisha said, You'll hold a son in your arms. No, my lord, she objected. Please, man of God, don't mislead me. She didn't know that was a prophetic word. But the woman became pregnant, and the next year, about the same time, she gave birth to a son, just as Elijah had told her. And the child grew, and one day he went out to his father to join him, who was in the field reaping. And he said to his father, My head hurts me. My head hurts me bad. So his father told his servant, Take him to his mother. And after the servant had lifted him up, he carried her to his mother, and the boy sat on her lap until about noon. Then the boy died. And she went up, and she laid him on the bed of the man of God, and she shut the door and went out. Now, I want you to understand something. This is a problem that got in the way. A heartbreaking problem. But she made a decision to say there's a solution. Now, it doesn't always work this way, but she had a direct contact with a powerful man of God. And so she laid the boy, this is her way of saying, I'm getting around this problem. She laid the boy on the bed, and she called her husband and said, please allow me to have one of the servants and a donkey so I can go to the man of God quickly and I'll return. Why are you going to him today, he asked. It's not the new moon or Sabbath. That's all right, she said. Everything's good. I just need to go. So she saddled the donkey, and she said to her servant, Lead on, and don't you slow down for anything unless I tell you to. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. And when he saw her in the distance, the man of God said to his servant Gehazi, Look, there's the Shunammite woman. Run and meet her and ask her, Are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is your child all right? Is everything all right? So he, she, he asked. She said, Everything is all right. And when she reached to the man of God, you see, she was speaking in faith. Everything is all right because I'm going to the man that gave me the child by the Spirit of God. He spoke it to me. So obviously he's got ability for God to change this. 
Now she was still human, but listen. She reached the man of God at the mountain, and she took hold of his feet. And Gehazi came over to push her away. But the man of God said, No, leave her here. She's in uh, bitter distress. But the Lord has hidden it from me, and, and I don't know why she's holding on to me. She said, Did I ask for a son, my Lord? She said, Didn't I tell you, don't raise my hopes? Elijah said to Gaza, Tuck your cloak into your belt, take my staff in your hand, and run. Don't greet anybody that you meet. And if anyone greets you, don't even answer. Lay the staff on the baby's face. But the boy's mother said, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave. So he got up and followed. In other words, she says, I'm not worried about you sending your servant. I came for you. She, she made up her mind how to resolve the situation, and she knew the answer was coming from the prophet himself. Gehazi went on ahead and laid the staff on the boy's face, but nothing happened. There was no response. So Gehazi went back to meet Elisha and told him, The boy has not awakened. And when Elisha reached the house, there was the boy laying dead on his couch. He went in and he shut the door on the two of them, and he prayed to the Lord. Then he got on the bed and laid on the boy, mouth to mouth, eyes to eyes, and hands to hands. And he stretched himself on him, and the boy's body grew warm. Elisha turned away and walked back and forth in the room. And then he got on the bed and stretched on the boy once more. Then the boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Elisha summoned Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite. And he did. And when she came, he said, Take your son. She came in, fell at his feet, and bowed on the ground. Then she took her son and went out. Now, very powerful story. In this story, it doesn't say that her husband, or she was barren, or her husband was too old to have children. She just said he was old, and she didn't expect any children. Now, I'm just going to give you a David Meeks thought. That's all. Elijah's a prophet. And so he knows what God's going to do at times when God reveals it. God revealed to him that she was going to get pregnant. God did not tell him to declare to her a miracle is going to happen and you're going to have a baby. He said, by this time next year, you're going to have a baby. Now let's put some scenarios together. She saw the man of God. She started feeding him. She built him a room. She recognized him as a man of God. Let's skip the prophetic word. She gets pregnant. Not supernaturally, but a husband and wife. She has a boy. The boy's in the field with his father. The boy has a headache. Most likely a heat stroke, something of that nature. And the boy dies in her arms. Listen. Because she had a relationship with the prophet of God, she had the legal right. Because she took care of him, she had the legal right to run to him. Now, she was convinced that she only had the baby because the prophet said she would. But what's he, he's just telling her what God's going to do. But because of the relationship, she was able to grab a hold of the prophet and say, I need you to come. Is it possible God knew the whole time that she was going to get pregnant and have a child. Is it possible that God said, I'm going to bless your house because you have blessed my servant? Is it possible that the real miracle in this was that God was going to raise her child from the dead because she took care of God's minister? That's very possible. You see, the solution to her issue was getting a hold of the man of God. And it worked for her. So as a leader, I don't know what that means to you. I'm just, just talking tonight about some things I think are powerful. But as leaders, we have to solve problems. Some of those problems are easy fixes. Some of those problems take a lot of faith. Some of those problems are people, personal issues. Some of those problems are us. We have to slow down and be patient. We have to get the facts. I'm going to read my little list I made for you, and then I'll, I'll uh, close for the night. We have to be patient. We have to get the facts. 
We can't assume what others are thinking. We have to view all sides before we can solve those problems. So, I hope this made sense to you. It seems like I might have been a little scattered. Maybe my sugar is high tonight. <laughs> um, just being silly. But if you've enjoyed this, if it if it uh, resonated, if it helped you at all, could you like send me some stars or uh, hearts or something, or just write on there, you know, thank you, anything, just just for the sake of knowing if it, it resonated with you. Amen. Rosemary says we have to hear what God says. Very powerful word, Rose. In all of this problem solving with other people we have to hear what God says there's no no real simple do this and do that it's hear what God says amen thank you guys I thank you for being with me and um, next week we'll be back here Isaiah good to have you thank you Isaiah um, next week we'll be back here again and if you can make it to church tomorrow or if you go to another church uh, hello Kim good to have you lady Try to go to church tomorrow. It's a great thing. Thank you, Valerie. It's a great thing to um, get in the house of God and worship the Lord together. There's great power in that. We spoke this morning at the men's breakfast on uh, Psalms 133, where when God's people dwell together in unity, it brings a commanded blessing. And I like walking in the commanded blessings. Amen. Amen.